Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula, your host. This episode is about conjunctions. A conjunction is a word that joins two clauses or two sentences in English grammar. I'm just kidding. This video is about astronomical conjunctions. A conjunction in astronomy is when two or more celestial bodies are close to each other in the sky and they share the same right ascension or ecliptic longitude. Right ascension is just longitude here on Earth as projected into the imaginary celestial sphere. And if you want to learn more about it, I explain all about right ascension and declination in this video, and here's the link. The ecliptic is the path of the orbit of the Earth around the Sun, but from Earth, it's the apparent path of the Sun, the Moon, and the planets across the sky. And the longitude of the ecliptic is measured from the vernal equinox moving eastward. <laughs> it's very windy today. Ah! In astronomy, there's another definition of conjunction that has to do with the position of the planets with respect to the sun. When a planet is on the other side of the sun from Earth, it's said to be at superior conjunction. And when one of the inner planets, Mercury or Venus, is in between the sun and the Earth, it's said to be at inferior conjunction. But this video is about conjunctions having to do with celestial bodies being close together and not about inferior or superior conjunction. You can view conjunctions at twilight or at night. At twilight, if it's a bright object like Venus or Jupiter, you can see it about an hour or so before sunset when it sinks below the horizon. Um, they may not be at the precise moment of conjunction, and when that occurs, those are called pulses. That's just two or more celestial bodies close together in the sky, either before or after the precise moment of conjunction. And uh, pulses usually involve the moon, just because the moon covers such a large area of the sky and makes a trip through the constellations each month, and it passes the planets at a similar point uh, during its phases. Occasionally, an object, and usually it's the moon, will cover up another celestial object, and that's called an occultation. It can be the moon covering a planet, a dwarf planet, a star, or another celestial body. There was an occultation in December 2022. The moon covered up Mars when Mars was at opposition. And pulses occur regularly, but whether you can see it depends on where you are on Earth. Conjunctions can be quite beautiful, and they're easy to see. Unlike comets, comets are unpredictable and of varying magnitude. And even though the media would lead you to believe that this comet that is visible right now, C 2022E3, uh, is visible to the naked eye, it's really not. It's at magnitude six, which is right at the limiting magnitude of most people's naked eye visibility. And you have to be in a very dark place. I probably could have seen that comment when I was in Big Bend, which is a border one, but I was not willing to get up at 4 a.m. to see it, especially since this week is going to be appearing in the night sky. Um, you do need binoculars to see it at magnitude six. And conjunctions, on the other hand, you don't need any special equipment. Uh, since they usually involve the brightest celestial objects, uh, you can see them with the unaided eye. And you don't need to be in a dark sky site. Um, the brightest object in the sky is our sun at negative 26 magnitude. And after that is the moon at negative 12 at its brightest, and then Venus at negative 4.7 at its brightest, and Jupiter is at its brightest negative um, 4, I think, whereas the brightest star in the night sky is Sirius at negative 1.4. So uh, usually the conjunctions involve very bright objects that can be seen from anywhere, and you don't need any special equipment, and they also make quite spectacular photographs that you can even take with your phone or your digital camera on a tripod. There was a conjunction last year, 2022, of Jupiter and 
uh, Venus, they were half a degree apart. Half a degree is half a pinky with your arm extended. Uh, your feet pinky is one degree. So very close together, but that one was uh, before sunrise, which is my least favorite type of conjunction, but I did get up and look at it. However, on March the 1st, 2023, there'll be a conjunction of Venus and Jupiter, half a degree apart, and this one will be a nighttime event. So if you see this video before March 1st, 2023, go check that out. It's a nighttime event, and you can see it with the unaided eye. You don't need to be in a dark sky sight. And you can see other conjunctions. You can find out about them wherever you get your celestial news. And they're well worth checking out because they can be quite beautiful. There was one on January 22nd, 2023. Uh, Venus and Saturn and the one day old crescent moon. Very spectacular and we went to check it out. Hello and welcome to the program Sula's Big Adventures with me Sula. Today is January 22nd 2023 and there's a conjunction today of Venus and Saturn and also a very thin new crescent moon. Our new moon was yesterday, so a very thin crescent moon, very beautiful pairing, and it's also Chinese New Year. Chunjia <laughs> Kwaila. Um, anyway, we're out here at the Don Edwards San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge to take some pictures of this special event, and it was beautiful. The thin crescent moon is now set, and the conjunction is still uh, it's going to set soon, but it's still up and it's just beautiful. And so I'm going to take some pictures and I'll show you my pictures. I hope you got to see it too. So that's it for this brief episode about the conjunction of Venus and Saturn and the thin crescent moon. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.